third basis of classification of emulsions is depending upon its route of administration or we can say that on the physical state wherein when both the phases remain in liquid state they can be emulsions and when both the liquid phases ultimately end up in a semi solid physical state they are also referred as creams the fourth basis of classification basically is on route of administration now route of administration and emulsion can be administered orally and it can also be applied externally so if it is internal use then it is exclusively emulsion and as already mentioned based on physical state if it is applied on the skin externally then it is creams so having understood different routes of administration and it is also important to mention that whenever we are talking about oral use or internal use the type of emulsion which is preferred would be oil in water type why it is so because oils are bland in taste and when oil is the dispersed phase it becomes discontinuous or less in quantity compared to water phase which is the continuous medium and water is very acceptable and at the same time the water phase can be adequately colored flavored and also this becomes an advantage when it is a preparation meant for internal or oral use as palatability will enhance the acceptability by the patient when we talk about external use emulsions we can categorize them into liquids i mean to say sorry liniments or it can also be creams and this can be either of type that is oil in water type or water in oil type so this is one difference one should remember that if an emulsion is intended for oral use a fabricator or a formulation chemist should always think of oil in water type of formulation strategy whereas if the preparation is meant for external use the flexibility can be to choose between oil in water or water in oil type now if we go one step forward to understand when we talk about exclusively cream dosage form that is under semi solids we can also say that when it is oil in water type they are generally called as vanishing creams and when the emulsion is water in oil type it is generally called as cold creams this topic will be discussed elaborately when a module on semi solid dosage forms will be undertaken having understood the classification the next concept to understand is formulation when or how one should take into account to prepare an emulsion so before we enter into the methodology in general we have understood the definition so here what is the prerequisite requirement in order to prepare an emulsion so we need two phases first and foremost that would be one would be oil which is generally the drug in this context having a medicinal value water as the second phase already the definition said that we need to have a stabilizer which is an emulsifying agent so bare minimum requirement would be oil water emulsant but as it is an internal use preparations and also it is thermodynamically unstable we will be adding other excipients like antioxidants and preservatives so it is a challenge for a formulation chemist that whenever a formulation development is undertaken the concepts of selection of excipient should be rational logical and supportive so talking about individually of each ingredient oil is important because it has various roles so already i mentioned it may have a medicinal value but at the same time the oil which is to be taken should remain liquid at the time of emulsification so its uh, density is also important and at the same time the oil's physical state should be considered it should be in liquid form the antioxidants and preservatives which are used should have better shelf life and they should be soluble in aqueous phase the selection of individual excipient has to be critical so that there is bare minimum incompatibility when a formulation is devised now having understood what are the formulation ingredients let's go into the mechanistic aspect 
the mechanistic aspect is what is the role of that third agent which we are adding we know that emulsion means having two phase system both should be liquid which is oil and water now next question comes why we need a stabilizer already it is clear that because both the phases have different densities so they are not miscible they are not going into each other easily and there will be an interfacial tension which is existing between both the phases now in order to make the system homogeneous temporarily homogeneous in order to make the system uniform we need to bring in a strategy where one becomes distributed in the other and appears homogeneous temporarily until otherwise a dose is withdrawn from the bottle for that reason and third ingredient called emulgent or an emulsifying agent is to be incorporated in this module we will not be going in detail with regard to mechanisms or rather the classifications because we have another module in pharmaceutical sciences called physical pharmaceutics which will be talking about the physical aspects so in this module as it is being only introduction and dispensing of extemporaneous preparations we will restrict our discussion with respect to just understanding or mentioning the ways by which an emulsifying acts so basically an emulsifying agent has the ability or the mechanism by which it helps in stabilizing a two phase biphasic liquid system are either by reducing the interfacial tension which exists between two phases or and it could be either of one mechanism or both going parallelly hand in hand forming an interfacial film so here in detail the discussion as i mentioned would be in physical pharmaceutics module so we just need to mention that the mechanisms could be either of one or a combination of both accordingly whether the emulsifying agent is behaving by reducing the interfacial tension or is forming an interfacial film the emulgents can be classified into different types or categorized based on either physico chemical nature of the emulgent and based on what nature of interfacial film is going to be formed by incorporating the emulsifying agent so talking about the first criteria emulgent may behave or act based on its physico chemical nature we can first take up the classification so emul emulgents which are added and which are going to bring in a uh, protection or stability based on its physico chemical nature we have first type polysaccharides under polysaccharides also we have multiple choices either one can choose an emulgent of polysaccharide which is of natural origin for example acacia tragacanth or starch or sometimes we have a better choice of using semi synthetic agents now under semi synthetic agents we have classical examples of methyl cellulose and sodium carboxy methyl cellulose apart from polysaccharides one can also have choice of picking surfactants as emulgents now surfactants it's a broad word or a broad term it's an umbrella word covering other types of compounds under it it could be broadly classified into surfactant could be anionic type that is having a particular charge generally negative cationic type having a positive charge and neutral or having no charge which is non ionic type to mention few examples under each if we are restricting to surfactant anionic type one can think of using alkali soaps or alkyl sulfates as emulgents if we are intending to incorporate cationic type of surfactants the choice could be quaternary ammonium compounds and the most preferred and the most commonly used type of surfactants being non ionic type we have examples spans and twins it is very important to mention because this class of emulsifying agents is very important and generally used so spans are used whenever we need water in oil type of systems and twins are used when we decide to have oil in water systems so just a remembering tip here is remember that spans are always lipophilic in nature and twins are hydrophilic in nature 
we have another class of compounds which can be called as emulgents coming out of finely divided solids now when we talk about finely divided solids we have examples like clays that is bentonite or aluminum hydroxide gel so they also can be incorporated into emulsion systems finally we have uh, sterol containing substances like beeswax wool fat and wool alcohols one can understand that these sterol containing substances are generally used in creams which is nothing but emulsions but intended for external use and it is semi solid in nature now ha having understood the categorization of emulgents let's talk about how each category if taken individually is going to bring in emulsification here i have introduced the term emulsification which means generating or helping in getting a stable preparation which is an emulsion wherein one phase into another is stabilized temporarily and making it appear homogeneous in nature so the process wherein the immiscibility problem is taken care of is by the process of emulsification so if surfactants out of polysaccharide category is chosen then it would be generally hydrocolloids and it is also important to remember that whenever polysaccharide surfactants are used they will result in oil in water type of emulsion and the mechanism by which these polysaccharide act they generally act by forming multi molecular interfacial film so that is one more advantage that i told you will not be discussing about mechanisms in this module but i mentioned that they have a property of forming multi molecular interfacial film thereby reducing the interfacial tension so for that reason emulsification is effected and at the same time since these are polysaccharides in nature when added to aqueous phase they have a property of swelling and when they swell they also incorporate increase in viscosity so one advantage is that because when viscosity is larger the settling problem of the dispersed phase will be taken care of so for that reason a balance of reduction of interfacial tension property and a balance of maintaining the adequate viscosity is the reason why polysaccharide types of surfactants are preferred and amongst natural and semi semi synthetic the most preferred are semi synthetic because under natural if chosen acacia is the one which is generally chosen in uh, this particular subject practical module when a student has to prepare extemporaneously an emulsion in the laboratory acacia is the most common type of emulsifying agent available the reason being that acacia emulsions are easy to form because they are natural polysaccharides and they become sticky in nature so it becomes easy to form a stable emulsions extemporaneously with minimum of mechanical equipments or mechanical energy because generally a student is adapting a motor and a pestle and its manual shaking or manual trituration wherein a stable emulsion is to be prepared and this preparation is generally extemporaneous and for internal use now at the same time though it is advantageous for extemporaneous preparation acacia cannot be taken when the preparation is intended for external use the reason being that as it is sticky in nature it will not be very much acceptable when it is applied on skin as this property may become a hindrance and generally even if the choice is not with acacia one can think of semi synthetic because acacia being from natural source will also have a problem of supporting microbial growth on long standing so if the shelf life of the product has to be better then a suitable preservative has to be added so rule of dispensing is more the ingredients in a preparation more will be the incompatibility so the good approach will always be minimum ingredients and a stable formulation so for that reason acacia if it is taken due to one reason which i have mentioned then parallelly a preservative should also be taken in the formulation otherwise the next approach could be that 
one can think of going with semi synthetic type of polysaccharides like methyl cellulose sodium carboxy methyl cellulose are generally preferred and we have different viscosity grades available based on the requirement having understood the nature of polysaccharides we also have a broader choice when we come to the second type of emulsifying agents which can be surfactants now surfactants is a very broad umbrella term which has multiple uses now when we are restricting our discussion in context of emulsions one should remember that surfactants are generally added because they behave as primary emulsions we don't need any supporting secondary emulsion to synergetically act or enhance the property of primary emulsion so for that reason surfactants are very advantageous because it's good emulsifying property cost effectiveness better stability so having all these critical aspects in advantage one can think of only surfactants as the choice now surfactants already we have seen that they are sub categorized into ionic non ionic or ampholytic type based on the charge they carry ampholytic is generally not used because of the other reasons and also it is important that under ionic whether we are restricting our uh, acceptance to anionic or cationic generally ionic are not preferred whenever we are intending to prepare an emulsion for external use because they bear charge and they might also have toxic effects so non ionic is the category under surfactants which is generally preferred for oral use or external use emulsions so that is the reason they are very popular amongst emulsifying agents class now the mechanism by which a surfactant generally of non ionic type can act it is either of the two which was already mentioned so one is being formation of a monomolecular interfacial film and also by the mechanism of reducing the interfacial tension so because of this advantage surfactant type of emulsifying agents are the examples to be remembered and out of surfactants the non ionic being very very important already mentioned swins and spans and twins spans whenever lipophilic surfactant property is required when we desire water in oil type of emulsion and hydrophilic surfactants like twins to be incorporated when we desire to produce oil in water type of emulsion now talking about soap emulsions or we can also talk about ionic emulsifying agents which are used now ionic surfactants are generally alkaline in nature so whenever alkalinity ph is desired then it is preferred to go with using ionic type of surfactants now generally they are intended for external use and at the same time the skin should be unbroken because they are alkaline in nature it may lead to irritation so unbroken skin should be not available and at the same time it is only for external type now under anionic type we have soap emulsions now soap emulsions can be again of monovalent soaps or divalent soaps now very important thing to remember here is if you are intending to prepare oil in water type of emulsion and you have decided to go with an emulsion of anionic type which is under ionic emulsions then one should go with monovalent soap as the choice because it results in formation of oil in water emulsion on parallelly if somebody decides to go with preparation of water in oil uh, type of emulsion then the choice should be divalent soaps having understood polysaccharide emulsions and surfactant type of emulsions we have third category which are called as finely divided solids so the finely divided solids mechanistic approaches that they act by forming thick impenetrable particulate interfacial film so again it is based on film theory wherein this surfact i mean to say this emulsifying agent is going to form a layer a particle layer or at the interface so that behaves as a particulate interfacial film and it does not require more mechanical energy rather a uh, finely divided solid so i mentioned wrong it needs more mechanical energy to form an emulsion 
and at the same time the most common one used is magnesium hydroxide so i was giving one example of oily drug which is liquid paraffin now if one is intending to prepare liquid paraffin emulsion the first choice for extemporaneous preparation would be acacia and the polysaccharide type but also if acacia is unavailable then one can use magnesium hydroxide falling under the category of finely divided solid as the emulsant and result in formation of a stable liquid paraffin emulsion now also we can use clays under finely divided solids these are usually used for topical use emulsions so first one has to categorically understand that what is an emulsion that is when oily drug is there what is the route of administration of the drug under study whether we intended to go with oral administration or external application they become the deciding factors with the formulation strategy or the formulation approach later on the fourth type of emulsifying agents which belong are sterol containing substances now sterol containing substances either could be beeswax wool fat and wool alcohol now it is very important to remember that these are generally fatty based type of materials so ideally when it is fatty loving or lipophilic type it will result in water in oil type of emulsion and they are also sometimes not added as emulsions but they might be added as emulsion stabilizers so you will find the mention of these ingredients in formulations of external use emulsions that is creams and it is important that these kind of preparations are only used for external use preparations so we have now understood that emulsifying agents can be from polysaccharide type it can be surfactant type it could be finely divided solids and it could be falling under sterol containing substances now this is with regard to physico chemical nature now the second main categorization of emulsifying agent is based on the nature of the interfacial film form so interfacial tension has to be reduced and what will be the nature of the interfacial film which is going to be formed by adding surfactants or in general emulsifying agent so we have different strategies or different theories proposed the first theory proposed for formation of interfacial film is referred as monomolecular interfacial film which is generally prepared by or found by surfactants so if the mechanism of formation of monomolecular interfacial film is confirmed then the emulsion which is taken is a surfactant we also have the approach where multimolecular interfacial film is used multimolecular will have more than one layer so generally you will find this behavior with hydrocolloids so hydrocolloids are the classical examples under emulsifying agents which will result in multimolecular interfacial film the third mechanism by which the emulsion can act is by solid particulate film so we mentioned monomolecular multimolecular now we are talking about solid particulate film so this will be produced by the fine powder when we incorporate which we have already studied finely divided solids which can be either bentonite or magnesium hydroxide so one mention important here is that when a student of first semester b pharmacy is working in a practical uh, experiment of preparation of emulsions one group can use acacia and prepare the emulsion while other group can prepare liquid paraffin emulsion using magnesium hydroxide and both the preparations can be compared with physical aspects as well as its performance can be established now having understood what types of emulsifying agents are available what are the mechanisms by which they act one has to decide now having a backup knowledge one has to come to decision making now here the decision making has to be critical so that is why it is said that formulation is an art so making of preparation is not just by adding all the ingredients having understood individual category of each excipient going but also having understood at the same time will there be any incompatibility popping up when all these things are brought together in one preparation so for that reason having understood multiple aspects when we are collectively looking at the final formula one has to remember that selection of emulsifying agents has to be decided based on number of things 
the first criteria to remember is whenever one has to choose the emulsifying agent is what is the route of administration of the product which one is intending to develop second idea should come is what type of emulsion we are aiming for are we aiming for oil in water type or water in oil type already it is debated that when water in oil is required and when oil in water is required and of course very importantly in order to understand what is going to be the shelf life of the prepared product that is stability anything which is prepared after lot of skill and time and money has to remain stable for at least longer period of time for that it it gets sold and patient is in a state of using the preparation so when the shelf life the shelf life is to be established stability of emulsion has to be accounted so stability will be governed by use of the type of emulsifying agent so having understood in our series today the conclusion with respect to factors of suspension and having introduced the second type of biphasic systems liquid in liquid under emulsions we have spoken with respect to its definition its merits its classification and emulsifying agents so in the next lecture series preceding series we will be starting with and continuing with identification tests for the type of emulsions thank you